what's up everybody just like Julio here in Tokyo and today I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, bellows the, the bellows that I have on the camera you can see this guy right here basically what these guys are are meant to is basically just to cover you know like a lens hood a lot of Nikon and Canons they come with this like hood that covers in here and that's basically just to uh, prevent the light the direct light to be hitting the lens and inside the lens of the camera if you get light hitting in the lens like you can see a shadow right there if you get the light entering the lens then you will start to get flares and other stuff that have flares and chromatic distortions and all the stuff that affects the final image that you want to have um, it's good for a couple of effects like if you want to shoot something and it's going to be in focus and you know you don't want to open the aperture so much and you want to like have everything clear you basically just do your exposure, you everything, do everything perfect, and then just shine a light right into the lens and that will flare it out. And then you can adjust the light uh, brightness if you can, and maybe put a strobe pointing to the lens and then turn it to the sides and then that will change the light effects. But um, usually that's an error, that's something that you don't want to have. So what you have is uh, lens hoods. And this basically acts like as, a, as a lens hood. Uh, and you can extend it now the problem with this lens is is obviously um, the lenses would have a uh, can extend pretty long the lenses would have um, uh, an angle right like it's if it's telephoto it has like a, this this type of angle right here and if it's a wide angle lens obviously it will cover more of the area of the camera right like if it's a fisheye then it will cover like from one side to one side and if you do this obviously you're gonna be covering a part of the of the area of the lens so like per se this 100 um this is the 110 lenses and if i go uh maybe all the way here the sides of the image will be already like covered in a little bit of dark because it will start to hit the lens it will start to see this part over here and that's something you don't want so so i went ahead and take out the the bellows this is this is what they are now these bellows are our mamiya ones so you see mamiya japan there it doesn't have any other logos unless it's right here this one over there and no any other signs of you know works craft or anything else that's said it right here in japan um i guess they should have something else somewhere else but i just haven't seen it anyway this i like this ones because instead of having uh this is the third version of the of the bellows that they have Mamiya carries uh, the G1, G2, and G3 bellows. This is the G3, G as in gizmo, uh, G3. And uh, the G1 basically is just a plastic hood that you just like pop out and pop back in. It's like a soft plastic. And basically it's like this one, th th like this big. And the G2, it's um, it looks like this, but you adjust it down here. It has a rail and it has two rails like this. And they always be pointing out. And you adjust the bottom part of it and and the bellows will be just extending and going back and at the end of it you can actually put filters on uh on, on on the end of it but this one the g3 bellows that has a lot of uh, a little more of stuff it has this uh scissor, scissor type of struts and this is better than the, than the than the two rails on the bottom because the two rails on the bottom when you extend the the bellows basically you're just holding it from the bottom so the bellows can like flip backwards or forward and this actually prevents that from happening because it will actually keep it even all the time so there is no like bending backwards or forward i used to have the g2 bellows and yeah that's exactly what happened as you can see it has a uh over here has like a little tube or uh, and over here it comes out so it's always like keeping it straight it just pushes it out it pushes it back in but it always keeps it on like at the same level so the the structure of this is like so much sturdier just because of this scissor thing and i think it looks really cool when you especially when you put it on the camera now that's not just all it has also a couple of other features in this back part over here uh, as you can see there's a little li lever over here if i push this thing out and it comes from inside you see it's right now in the middle so if I push this thing out, you can see it has this thing over here. Now this this is actually holds a space for two. You can probably see an incision maybe right there. 
right there there's an incision right there and this thing falls in the can fall in the back part of it now so it, it has two slots that you can put stuff in there it's basically for three inch square filters and these filters can be made out of glass can be made out of uh, gels or it can be the plastic filters and obviously there will be like the ND filters to make the the uh, it's just it's just to make the the maybe to put a color or when you're shooting maybe something is too orangey or too bright and you want to make it more cold or maybe something is too bright this is what Hansel Adams used to do they used to put like darker um, darker filters on the image so he can do longer exposures like if you want to get the river flow or a, or a waterfall or if you want to get like like just the sky like blurred out or the ocean very smooth obviously you will need to have like a long exposure and to be able to manage a long exposure you need a lot of time with the with the frame open but if it's a bright place uh, it would basically immediately burn your your film so what you want to do is to make it as dark as possible without needing to close all the aperture like if you just close all the aperture you have the minimum light that is getting in and still if you open like five seconds it's too bright outside so it will, five seconds will wash it out so you cut in half, you cut two times, you cut look very dark, you know, like those glasses you used to see the eclipse that are really dark. So you use one of those and just leave the camera open for a couple of minutes and you can get a, like a really nice exposure depending on the, you know, the darkness that the, that the filters would put. So that's sort of like a way to use it as well. So that's pretty cool. And there's two spots to put here. So it will be like, it, it fits a lot, the three, uh, three inches filters are pretty pretty generic now what I'm gonna go ahead and do it is put this thing on the back part and you see it has a cover on the front so basically you take this off and you can put a filter right there and this thing would not bother the front part of the of the filter so you can just put it there and push it back in there now uh, one thing I forgot to show you on this is it comes with this little lever right here this little switch and that switch inside it moves and it takes these little tiny it's very it's made out of aluminum but it's really thin and that's basically just you so you can put your your plastic in there and then you just cover it and it has a little uh, holes in there you can barely see right there there's a hole and this thing has like spikes in there so you put the, these things on the holes you put it back there and this thing would actually just uh, basically lock it in there into place like like that see I can see right there and it will be locked into place and it would basically not not move outside and that's that's how basically you use this to hold your plastics and you can slide slide the plastic back in there obviously making sure that it's on the both on the back side put it all the way back in there and then you have like a plastic cover right there with your filter or whatever you can put two stuff in back here and then on the front this would be a four inch square size of vignetter and they, they call it a vignetter because you can either uh, like burn the edges on a blue tone or an orange tone or you can put a, a gradient like if you're shooting a sky that is very very bright and you want to make it dark but the bottom part is kind of dark like an ocean or something and um, or, or an, um, maybe like a landscape and you want the, the the bottom part to be like like it has a very contrasted part and you want to just, just tone down the sky and maybe clear up a little bit on the ground there is a couple of vignettes where the top part is bluish and then the bottom part will be clear and then you can Put that into here like right in front and since it's the further part from the lens it will be like really blurred out so it will be just giving you that effect and uh, basically you slide that thing right up here it has a basically just grips it like that you can see you can put something in between there and uh, I'm not sure if this is actually to to hold something I've never even used it or or, or seen what is this for but maybe I mean they seem to be just screws or something or maybe there is a couple of other filters that can hold in there but uh, you put it in there and then this thing has a uh, another lever right here you can push up and down 
and it moves up and down uh, exactly 14 millimeters and you can see it, it pops out from the bottom right here and it moves out right here right there and 14 millimeters is it's it's a it's a pretty good distance for moving the, the the screen right here so you can put your filter here move it down or move it up and you can see on the on the image on the viewfinder you can see it will definitely be getting darker but uh, you can actually see the effect that you're getting uh, like on the landscape that you're shooting or something obviously this is definitely not for fashion so much but it, it's a way to hold a bunch of filters you can put up to three maybe four filters on this if this thing's outside we hold that type of filter the veneers come in true brands that are really famous um, among you know the, the photographers that use like film one of the brands is called Leon and the other brand is called Selwind. So there's Selwin and there's Leon and, and this they, they fit perfectly right here. So you got your plastics down there, you got your gels, then you got your your vignettes and so it's a way to put like all the things you need into this thing. Now as you can see the light cutting is is like really I have a really soft light but right now and still you can see like the, how, the, how the way is just like cutting cutting the light inside there so I can like put it right here now it extends uh, I think from 50 millimeters to 175 centi uh, millimeters so that's that will be like 50 millimeters five centimeters from here to here and it will extend all the way to basically 17 centimeters all the way all the way up to here and yeah that's that's basically what it is now things to consider with this thing it it has this ring out here and this this knob down here now this knob you unscrew it and it is a little metal knob and as you can see it, it actually this one actually turns in a very funky way because when you put the, the camera and the lens this thing will be on the bottom and if the lens is too heavy this thing would fall and be holding the weight of the camera and the lens would would basically would just be screw so that could be a problem also if you have it like like screwed out like that it will basically hold the camera with this and that could damage it and uh, next thing this ring over here is basically an extension ring and as you can see it has this place where the, the screw actually falls in and this this basically this thread right here where you put it on the on the inside of the lens you can see it fits right there so it will be like a filter for the lens so you put it there and it will extend make the extension so that you can put the bellows out now the screw that we have in here it has a plastic cover right on top of the screw so I'm gonna screw it all the way in and try to show you guys right there you can see maybe it's hard to see maybe right now but it does have a whitish kind of tip on this uh, screw and that thing comes out <laughs> it's it's glued in there but if you drop I mean if you lose that little white dot and look it's it's super tiny so if you're like moving the lens and you don't unscrew it all the way out and this thing is right there you see it has a nib right at the edge uh, maybe you can't see it so much but it, it like it holds itself right there you see so if that thing just like pulls out that plastic bit um, and you lose it maybe you're in a on top of grass or something like that and you just don't find that little nib again it's gonna give you hell because this thing is gonna start scratching this and it's not gonna hold it well so when you put it it's gonna be like wiggly and I did have that issue with the G2 bellows I used to have before that's the reason why I got the G3 so yeah be careful with not with not losing that part um, a lot of people wants to have maybe a couple of this to put in all the lenses because all the lenses are fine and that's that's okay I haven't tried that I haven't seen how to get more of this I don't know if they're selling them some people said that it's just an extension but I'm not even sure these bellows are basically suggested for the 65 millimeters to the 360 millimeters um, more than that uh, less and more than that would be just pointless so it's, it's set up for the 65 millimeters now don't take me wrong it would actually fit on the 50 millimeters um, because every lens for the RC67 is actually 77 
uh, millimeters wide. So all the lenses have the same, the same uh, uh, basically size. It's not like Canons or Nikons where lenses are like smaller and you have like the 55 and the 85 and the like different size of the rings that you have to be like the 68 or whatever. And like you have to get all the freaking adapters for each one of them. This is basically just one. All of them are 77, all the lenses for the, for the RC67. So you just get one adapter, maybe you get an ND filter, maybe you get the little stars ones or whatever. Um, and it will fit in all the lenses. The thing that is, um, it says the 65 and not the 50. I have the 50 lens, uh, but when I put it all the way to five centimeters right here, and I put the 50 right here, I can actually see through the lens, the edges of the black thing. And But this is actually when I'm shooting um, film because the film will give me the actually six by seven centimeters so I can see the edges. But when I put a digital back on the 50, this actually does cover uh, well, the the edges I can still see the edges on the on the mask, but I don't see the the edges of this cover. So um, that would be pretty much it for the G3 Bellows uh, lens cover lens hood of the Mamiya. And I hope you guys find it uh, interesting. And uh, yeah, I love these guys. I mean, it's they just look so badass, especially when you're outside and just like shooting. And it does give you a couple of more stuff. And it would even it will impede you from getting uh, basically light flares into your images, which is a good thing talking photographically. If you want to do that effect, then you basically don't need this. But if you want it or not, it depends. If, either if you want it or not that effect, I think the most important thing would be to actually get the clean shots. And if you want that effect, you can actually force it and control it because that is the important thing about photography to be able to control your your outcome all the time and be sure what you're getting so this is a great option I really like it and I use it most of the time uh, if it changes your photos um, I don't think you will notice because uh, you use it so much that it, you, you just think all the all the photos are just coming normal but I have taken this out having the lens hitting the light hitting the lens and the lens are, are, are you know don't get me wrong the lens are actually designed specifically for not getting light into them that's why they're like coming out the lens is not right like right in front of here the lens is actually a little deep so they aren't designed not to hit not to let the, the light hit the the inside of it but sometimes you're shooting something and it's like pointing into the light and that's when you get the trouble but you, you would not see it that much unless you're like forcefully do it but um, yeah i hope you guys find it interesting and uh thanks uh justin for the questions and see you guys later bye bye